Hi, I'm Alex McRickard, and this is the fishing report for the month of August in Virginia. In this month's report, we head down to Little Creek Reservoir, located just outside of Williamsburg, Virginia. And we're going to show you techniques and tactics for targeting late summer walleye and yellow perch in deep water. In this report, I'm also going to show you a potential state record saw guy that was encountered this past spring during a sampling event at Little Creek Reservoir. We're also going to hear from DWR Fisheries Biologist Scott Herman, who's going to touch upon the status of the walleye fishery at Little Creek Reservoir in addition to management strategies. Little Creek Reservoir, located in James City County, is a water supply reservoir for the city of Newport News and is 947 acres when at full pool. This deep-sided, clear reservoir has limited bank structure, and in late summer, it can be really beneficial to target drop-offs and flats off of points in the lower portions of the reservoir. Out here on Little Creek Reservoir doing some deep water jigging and uh, really pretty walleye here picked up the uh, silver buddy in about 19 feet of water, marking some fish off some points, dropped this silver buddy down and this walleye just crushed it. So we'll get him back in here. Nice fish to, to get out here on a cloudy day on Little Creek Reservoir. See you, buddy. During summer months in Virginia, many impoundments with walleye populations experience thermal stratification of the water column. A thin layer of rapidly changing water temperature, known as a thermocline, separates warm water from cold water. Below the thermocline, decomposition of organic matter creates low dissolved oxygen, which is not sustainable for fish species. This in turn forces cold water species like walleye, sawgye, and striped bass to occupy the upper half of the water column immediately above the thermocline. Now every impoundment is slightly different, but at Little Creek Reservoir, the thermocline typically sets up in the low to mid 20 foot zone. You can find the thermocline by looking for the sonar signal to reflect off the denser and colder water. At Little Creek Reservoir, we found the thermocline in the 26 to 27 foot zone. Knowing this, we focused on jigging blade baits on flats just above the thermocline in 17 to 22 feet of water and found a variety of different fish species. We're out here on Little Creek Reservoir doing a bit of uh, deep water jigging. Um, with a blade bait in about 18 to 20 feet of water marking some fish off some points and just found this pretty 13 and a half inch yellow perch We'll take him nice fish to jig up uh, late summer out here in, in deep water. We'll let him go get this guy back in Out of uh, 18 feet of water a little chain pickerel probably uh, 14 inches something like that So we'll take it not a bad fish out here Another uh, pickerel on the blade bait. A little bit bigger than the first one, but uh, another fish. We'll get him, get him back in. This one came out of about 17 and a half feet of water. Another pretty yellow perch here on the blade bait. Took that blade bait right on the drop. Pretty, uh, pretty colors on that fish. On Little Creek Reservoir, we were riding around, focusing on flats. Uh, again, in that sort of 17, 18, 19 foot range is really that sweet spot off of points in the lower part of the reservoir. And looking for, for flats that kind of level out before a large drop off, those walleye would push up some of those yellow perch and they're, they're kind of feeding on those flats. Having a sonar unit is really important to help you locate fish. And again, you're looking for arches lower in the water column in that 17, 18, 19 foot zone. With these blade baits being one of the more popular ways to, to fish, you know, for these fish in depth, they really, I was fishing with a half ounce, just classic silver buddy here, and this blade bait is gonna really sink like a rock, right? And when you go to jig it upwards, it's a fast sweeping motion upwards with the rod tip, and that gives you a very tight vibration of that blade bait moving up in the water column. After you jig it upwards, I drop that rod straight slack so that blade bait drops immediately down to the bottom. And it's that fast sweeping motion upwards followed by that fast drop on slack line that's going to cause a reaction strike, right? Those fish oftentimes are going to take it on the drop. They're going to pin that blade bait down to the bottom. And when you go to jig again, you're just going to be tight on a fish. So again, these blade baits, they, they, you can drop them down. I was using a half ounce. Um, if it's a little bit less windy, you can get away with a quarter ounce. If it's a really windy day and there's current, maybe three quarters of an ounce. Um, but again, it's sort of a, a, a great bait. It's fun to fish. You can feel that vibration. Um, but again, most of those fish are going to take on the drop. 
So Scott, as a fisheries biologist with the agency, you've been managing Little Creek Reservoir for 16 years now. What makes this fishery unique, um, unique in your eyes? Well, Little Creek Reservoir provides a d diverse fish assemblage that's very popular with a lot of the anglers in the I-64 corridor. There are other lakes and reservoirs nearby, but you know, Little Creek Reservoir pro provides a nice scenic atmosphere for anglers to target. It's trolling motor only, so a lot of people have to remember that. You, know, you can't be out there running around with your bass boat like you can at Chickahominy Lake. <laughs> but it's definitely a nice, quiet place to you know, target a lot of the fish that are out there. Decent largemouth bass population, find some nice fish, you know, size structure, and a lot of that's based on the great uh, blueback herring uh, population there, so the good forage base. Um, we, do, we actively stock striped bass, the walleye saw guy, and just recently, in the last couple of years, we've been stocking black crappie fingerlings as well. That provides you know, a nice uh, assemblage of fish for anglers to target. You know, popular fishery for people that want to target those species. Now, as, as far as the walleye fishery goes, uh, in the spring you do primarily most of your sampling, um, like in the month of March. Yeah, usually March is the ticket when we're getting out there doing night electrofishing. You know, Little Creek Reservoir has no real feeder streams or rivers flowing into it, so a lot of those walleye and saw guy, they'll basically get pinned up on the riprap and use it like a, you know, as a false uh, pseudo spawning attempt where they're trying their best to go through the motions of the spawn. And that makes it a lot easier for us, you know, basically you know, the first and second week of March when the water temperature hits the you know, 50 to 52 degree range, a lot of those fish will be stacked up along the riprap. We were able to see that over the last couple of years when we're out there night shocking. It allows us to tag a lot of those fish, part of the walleye reward program that we have here in Virginia, various waters. You have the $20 reward tag. It makes it really popular where angler can catch a nice fish, have the fun of catching that fish, and a little benefit of getting a $20 reward check in the mail, you know, once that check gets mailed out to you. So. That's awesome. And Little Creek Reservoir over the years has received fingerling stockings. Um, and actually this year uh, we stocked 500,000 walleye and saw guys. Yeah, it was, fry. yeah, it was a different mix this year due to uh, some of our hatchery limitations. We're trying something a little different going with the uh, bulk uh, stocking of the walleye and saw guy fry. Majority of those fish that we did stock were saw guys, so it'll be interesting to see if that saw guy fry stocking will amount to a good year class. I know in 2014, when we stocked 95,000 saw guy fingerlings into Little Creek Reservoir, that produced a great year class of fish. The fish grew really, grew really fast, and anglers really had fun targeting them. And we actually saw one this past spring that was you know, 7.2 pounds, you know, solid fish that would have classified as a state record saw guy if somebody, somebody catches. And to the best of our knowledge, she's still out there swimming. Yeah, she's got two tags too. Yeah, so that'll be a forty dollar reward for that fish. You're able to catch that, you know, that saw guy, and whether or not she's still sitting at seven point two pounds, or maybe even a little bit larger. We don't know. So we'll yeah. see if somebody catches it. Anglers are reminded that there's an eighteen inch minimum size limit on the walleye saw guy caught out of Little Creek Reservoir. Creel limit's still five per person per day in aggregate of the walleye saw guy. There is some trophy, a lot of trophy potential to the fishery. So anglers are reminded they don't have to necessarily harvest any of a lot of those five, six, seven pound fish, unless you maybe like catch a new state record saw guy. But we saw Alex. One of the fish he was able to catch a nice walleye that he released so you know they are one of the better tasting fish out there but that trophy potential is there and we've seen walleye up to nine pounds and fish can live you know 10 11 12 years so there's a uh, you know a lot of older fish that are out there and you know, that trophy size potential is pretty impressive yeah this is a great again a great destination for targeting walleye and saw guy not the only destination in eastern virginia um, there's some other lakes i know you manage lake cheston that's got walleye and saw guy as well uh, lake whitehurst is another option but uh if you live in the Williamsburg area, uh, Little Creek Reservoir is a really great uh, opportunity, and it's a quick day trip from Virginia Beach or, um, or the Richmond area. So thanks again for tuning in to this month's Fishing Report. Hopefully these tips and tricks can help you find success while out on the water in, in late summertime. And uh, comment below, please let us know what questions you have about fishing for walleye or any sort of deep water jigging opportunities in Virginia. We'll see you next time.